If you are unexperienced and want to perform a diagnostic ultrasound, a lower limb deep vein ultrasound is probably the easiest one to start with. There is no single correct way to perform this ultrasound, however some elements are fundamental and mandatory. So let me show you my approach to these ultrasounds and some common pitfalls to avoid. Before you begin with the ultrasound, you should preferably be on the patient's right side. The left side of the screen should either face the patient's right side or cranially. In this example, we will focus on the patient's right side. With the patient lying flat on his back, I place the ultrasound probe in the patient's groin and look for two adjacent anechoic structures. These will represent the femoral artery and vein. I know that the femoral vein is located medially and if the probe is facing the correct way, this should be on the right side of the screen. If unsure, I can either turn on the Doppler or apply pressure. The femoral vein should collapse with light pressure, but not the femoral artery. With Doppler, you can see if there's arterial flow or not. For many cases of deep vein thrombosis, the thrombus is extensive and visible right away from the groin and down the leg. Acute or subacute DVT will often have either of two appearances, but chronic or acute on chronic is a bit more difficult diagnosis and for the simplicity beyond the scope of this lecture. An acute DVT can be anechoic, so visualizing the vein is not sufficient. The vein might be distended, but the most important finding is a non-compressible vein. This is why it's important to compress the vein throughout the examination. In other cases, usually subacute, the thrombus is hyperechoic and easily seen. The vein here is also not compressible. For the latter, there are two common pitfalls many beginners fall into. The first is to make sure that you're not looking at the lymph node in the groin. These can be prominent, especially in patients with cellulitis, which, unfortunately, can also overlap clinically with DVT. This can be avoided by either following the structure and make sure it's a vessel, or turn on the Doppler which will show signal in the hilum of the lymph node, but usually not within the thrombus. The other pitfall is a flow artifact. This can look similar, but in this case the vein will collapse with light pressure. Now, once I've established a patent femoral vein, I perform a flow measurement in the groin. I place the cursor on the femoral vein and make the patient take a deep inspiration and expiration. Since this is a proximal vein, we normally see a respirophasic flow. Loss of this respirophasic flow indicates obstruction of the proximal venous system. Next, I follow the vein down the leg. As I move the ultrasound probe down every 1 to 2 cm, I apply light pressure again and make sure that the vein collapses. Exemption to this is when you reach the hunter's canal. Here, the vein might not collapse as easily with the patient lying on his back. Next, I have the patient change position and lay it down on his abdomen. I then place a pillow underneath the patient's feet to get a light flexion at the knee. I place the ultrasound probe in the popliteal fossa. Make sure that you look at the correct site. This can be surprisingly easy to mess up. If available, I press virtual convex settings on the ultrasound machine. This will give a broader overview as I move down the calf. First, I locate the popliteal vein, which will be located superficially to the popliteal artery. Same principle applies here. If unsure, either use Doppler or light compression. Once I have established the popliteal vein, I make another flow measurement. With the cursor on the popliteal vein, I lightly squeeze the patient's calf. This should show a spike of flow, given that the calf veins are patent. If not, this might indicate a downstream occlusion. Once you move further caudally down the calf, the veins will branch and become smaller and smaller. At this point, I stop the ultrasound. This is often at the mid or lower third of the calf. If the patient has, however, a focal pain, I do check that area with ultrasound. 